This is how ultra-processed food directly impacts fat accumulation. A lot of people would lead us to believe that it's, it's these additives, that it's changing our, our chemistry, our biology, our metabolism. And there's no real concrete evidence to suggest that, although I'm not saying it's not the case. But I like to look at the larger data, and I like to also understand the mechanisms. And one thing that I have to get right out in the open that I cannot deny and I have to be nuanced about is that if ultra-processed foods are easier to consume, we're probably just simply going to consume more. But how could this directly impact fat accumulation? How could this directly impact our weight gain? Well, I want to highlight one particular study that was published in Cell Metabolism because this I mean, it couldn't be more clear. It's not a huge study. It's about 20 people, but it was still really interesting. For two weeks, they had subjects consume only ultra-processed foods or only whole foods, okay? Two weeks. And then at the end of two weeks, they swapped, okay? The whole food group went to the ultra-processed group and vice versa. In these diets, they matched macros. So their carbohydrates, they matched their fats, their proteins. Okay, they tried to balance out the vitamins and minerals the best that they could. They even tried to match for caloric density in a lot of situations. But the biggest piece of this was they were allowed to eat as much as they really wanted to. So it was somewhat ad libitum. Now, it can be a little confusing because how do you quote unquote match for calories when it's ad lib? I think they were mainly looking at energy density, right? So the same equal amounts of proteins, fats, carbs. So the energy density was the same per se, not the total amount of calories eaten in a day. What was wild is that the ultra-processed food group consumed 508 more calories per day on average. Per day. That literally adds up to 3,500 plus calories per week. That is a pound. That is a pound. 3,500 calories extra a week would gain you a pound a week. Four pounds per month. Okay, we're talking pushing 40 pounds in a year just by eating predominantly ultra-processed foods. And in this case, it was solely ultra-processed foods. But there's something that we should probably pay attention to as well. Like what's gonna make us want to eat more? Well, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that when you have high glycemic spikes or high glycemic foods and these big spikes and chronically elevated levels of insulin, you're gonna potentially wanna eat more, right? So if you look at some of the literature, which we'll talk about in a second, there's a very strong correlation between ultra-processed foods and type 2 diabetes. Now, I'm not just saying that it's the sugar, it's this and that, it's constantly spiking insulin, that's what's increasing the risk of diabetes. I think there's an overconsumption issue at play as well. But I encourage you to do something. When you eat a whole food diet, like try it out for a week. Try it for a week where you just only commit to eating whole foods and measure your blood glucose. Measure your sugars, let's see what happens. And then go a week of eating ultra-processed food. Do it for science, enjoy some ultra-processed food. But try to be rigorous about this. Try to be rigorous in the sense that I want you to eat about the same amount of calories and try to even eat roughly the same amount of macros if you can. And just watch what happens to your blood glucose. I have personally done similar experiments on myself and processed food for me sends my blood sugar about 20 to 30% higher than it does when I'm not eating processed foods. And it probably simply has to do with changing up the food matrix, right? Like how the food is broken down. It's not in its whole food form. Perhaps we digest it faster, faster than we're naturally accustomed to. A lot of times I'll wear a continuous glucose monitor and that way I can just watch exactly what foods are doing. I put a link down below if you want to try one of those out too. Yes, Cygnos is a sponsor on this channel, so disclosing my relationship there, but it's worth it if you want to really watch how certain foods affect you. Like if you go to fast food and you want to see what happens to your glucose, or you eat a box of crackers and you want to see what happens to your glucose. So a continuous glucose monitor, in this case the Dexcom G7, it in real time can beam it right to your phone. So in this case, I'm looking at it in real time, what's happening to my glucose as I'm eating something. So it makes it very, very interesting. Before you needed a prescription to get a continuous glucose monitor. Now with Cygnos, you can get a Dexcom G7 glucose monitor that's literally connected to your arm or wherever you wanna put it. And then you just go to watch it in real time. So that link down below saves you 15% off. 
Now, the cool thing about Cygnos, it also uses this algorithmic technology to help coach you. So when your glucose goes high, it helps you get it down. It also helps you develop these relationships with the food that you're eating and what happens to your spikes. So that link is down below. I highly recommend you check them out. There's also something that we have to remember here. When people go on an ultra processed food diet, you're replacing wholesome foods that have anti-inflammatory effects with foods that even if they did not, let's pretend they didn't have an inflammatory effect, you're still replacing something that clearly has an anti-inflammatory effect. So nice bowl of fruit and some chicken breast and some veggies, and you eat a Pop-Tart that's fortified with vitamins and minerals, even if that Pop-Tart didn't have any negative effect on inflammation, you're still at a net negative because now you've missed out on the anti-inflammatory effect of the fruits and veggies and good quality food over here. Now, one of the studies that was referenced in a very large umbrella review with literally 9,888,373 people, like huge 2024 umbrella review of all the meta-analysis. There was one of the studies they looked at there and it was looking at the relationship between ultra-processed food and low-grade inflammation. And essentially they were trying to bucket why this is happening. And they thinking a lot of these sort of high insulin spikes and chronically high insulin levels, not to mention the industrialized fats, like the trans fats, these are leading to a low grade inflammation that's occurring all the time, which seems to have an impact on, of course, our insulin sensitivity, which therefore has an impact on our storage of fat, which therefore has an impact on our glycemic regulation and our high levels of blood sugar. By the way, what they found when they looked at these 9 million plus people, almost 10 million people in all these different studies, they found that overwhelmingly most of the data was either suggestive, highly suggestive, or convincing towards the argument that ultra processed foods do lead to adverse health outcomes. Very, very interesting. A lot of work still needs to be done but most of the literature is now starting to support the fact that ultra processed foods, especially when they replace wholesome foods, are going to be problematic. And when it comes down to weight gain, all we have to do is look around the US and we can see what we're talking about here. I'll see you tomorrow.